Now I'd like to show you how to connect directly to an OPC server without creating an OPC systems.net tag. To do that, we can do that from any client application like trending, data logging, recipe management, even in the calculations that we demonstrated earlier under configure tags. But here we're going to use the Visual Studio application again. So let's select View Solution Explorer and bring up that form uh, that we were working with earlier. We double click on the form, it appears. We can now close the Solution Explorer. And let's dra drag another OPC controls label onto the form. This time, we're going to go to Properties, go down to the Text OPC Systems Tag property, and when we select Local, we see to the right, at the very top, a direct OPC selection. If we expand that, we can then connect to OPC servers. We can browse local and remote OPC servers. Let's go down to the SIM device and select Ramp 2 under the SIM device. Let's set the OPC update rate to 0 0.1. We'll see the queuing effect occur. When we click OK, you can see the full path is returned, and that reference designates that we're going to connect directly to an OPC server through the OPC system service so that we're using TCP connections from the Visual Studio application to the service, but the OPC system service is connecting to the OPC server locally using the standard OPC DCOM connection. If we now run and debug this application, we can see that the service will automatically add that item for us and start bringing the value back for us. So the direct OPC interface can be used in all client applications including OPC client.net with your third-party OPC client. This is a great tunneling product so that you can have systems all over the world using third-party OPC clients, Visual Studio applications, or the great OPC systems.net components like trending and the OPC controls components here, and all communicating back to your OPC servers.